Hello and welcome to the channel where I explore concepts related to basic psychology and mental health along with creativity and the arts and ideally how the two connect back to each other. Today I'm talking about the importance of drama and art in education. <laughs> I care so much about this because I've studied theater myself and felt how much I grew as a person out of that. And I'm a teacher and an artist and I work with students and I get to see what a difference it makes in their lives. Here I have a video on artistic intelligence. What are some ways of thinking that are kind of uniquely emphasized within the arts and how is that beneficial to us? So you might check that out if you're interested. But in this video today, I'm talking about eight critical skills <laughs> that the arts help bring out in us and in students. So if you're interested in that, stick around. So to start, I want to touch really quickly on the word drama. It comes from the Greek drau, hopefully that's how you say it, and it means I do, or to take an action. So it's any time a story is performed. So that could mean acting in the traditional sense on stage or in films, that could mean puppetry, that could mean mime, that could be music or dance. So drama in a broad sense, not just theater, even though I love it. Skill number one that drama and the arts really help develop is an increase in self-confidence. I am obsessed with this one because I felt that in myself huge during my time studying theater, and this is for a couple reasons. First is, the pursuit of any art encourages a student to learn to accept criticism. And this is true if you're going to get good at any skill ever, but the arts encourage a particular focus on excellence and really getting it right. If you go into anything competitive in the arts, they can get really intense. It really encourages learning how to take criticism and grow from it and not be afraid of it. You have to <laughs> take it all the time. The slogan for the National Theater Institute in New York is risk, fail, risk again. And it is my favorite that plays in my head sometimes because it's so true. My time in college would involve almost every day going to class, not knowing what was going to be asked of me, but expecting that I was probably going to go up in front of a group of people and do something wrong. The odds were really good that I was going to do something wrong and it was going to be fine. It was going to be okay. It was going to be good and I was going to grow and learn from it because everyone else in the room was going to do something similar. They were going to go up and make a mistake and the professor was going to teach us through our mistakes. And it's a really important way of thinking. I have a video here on self-confidence and I did another one on the idea of grit and resilience. All of these have to do with getting used to criticism and being okay with making mistakes and the arts really encourage this. Number two, communication skills. Wow, so big, so important, so prevalent in the arts. And this is because there's an emphasis on self-expression. So when you have this swirl of like strange feelings that you don't know how to put into words, the arts encourage you to find a way to express it. How can you convey the meaning that you're feeling to another person using words or not. And that's really important. We have an emphasis today on just being able to state things plainly and clearly, but that is so narrow and limiting and the arts understand that and reach beyond that. If you're a dancer, you're, you're studying body language. If you're a painter, you're studying color. How many ways can we express something and how specifically can we express that feeling? There's also a great emphasis on listening. We must listen. If you want to be a professional pianist, you will be listening to recordings and understanding why and how they're making different choices in the way they play. If you're an actor, you're going to be observing people in the world and saying, who is this? How can I learn from them? And then find a way to portray their story or their feelings on stage. You spend a lot of time listening and not only talking, and that's really important today. We must spend more time listening and observing before we go out speaking and expressing. Arts emphasize this in spades. Number three, another huge one. All of these are huge, valuable skills that we don't get in math and science. The third one is it teaches us to master our emotions. The arts allow us to explore very complex themes in a way that is safe and appropriate. They also teach empathy. This idea before of like listening and kind of observing. Again, if you're a musician, you need to understand what the composer is trying to tell you in the piece that you're going to be performing. What were they thinking and feeling when they wrote this? 
that is part of your study, is spending lots of time like, taking in another person's feelings and then seeing how they relate to your own. It teaches huge emotional intelligence skills. I actually want to do another video literally on classical music because it changed my younger brother's life. He's a pianist and he spent so much time listening to composers. It helped him understand his own feelings. He's a very quiet, private person and he said it just really helped him unlock a lot of things and deal with his anxiety. I mean, there's so much potential here that many of us never tap into and it helps us as workers, as students, as being useful members of society because we'll be healthier people. So the third one is that working in the arts helps teach us to manage our emotions healthfully. Number four, it helps with creative thinking and problem solving. I love this too. I have another video on creative thinking and ways to tap into that. It's so important. Creative thinking is different than critical thinking. We want both. They pair together really well. Most of us in school learn a lot about critical thinking. We're presented with a problem. What steps do we need to go through to manage it? Creative thinking has to do with coming up with new ideas and creating new connections between them. So it's an entirely different way of operating. The two work really brilliantly together. You want both. And you want students and workers who know how to think creatively and solve problems that way. Anybody who's a brilliant scientist, a brilliant mathematician, they're doing both modes of thinking. There's this funny idea today that what we really need is math and the sciences and the arts are sometimes for fun, and that is completely false. The two work together, or really not at all. There are very limited spheres in which you can be only creative or only analytical. But for 98, 99% of the good work done in the world, you need both. Number five, it teaches teamwork. I'm telling you, everything you can learn here is huge and great. Not that you can only learn teamwork in the arts, obviously, but again, the arts really emphasize it, especially something like drama or theater or where you are creating a piece with a group of people. Again, those listening skills, it forces you to understand where another person's coming from. What are they bringing to the piece here? How can we all together get this job done? There's another element here in that the arts don't always have a set, perfectly clear goal. They will to a certain extent, but in the arts you have to work with who you have and what you're given and you kind of create the pieces you go. Anyone who's worked in a play or a dance knows that you have, the director will have an idea, but a good director, a good director will adjust as they go to the ability and the needs of the team that they have. And this is true in any kind of work in the world as well. You may have this goal that you want, but you will get the best outcome if you're open to possibly having a slightly different version that better suits the people you're working with, the tools you have, the circumstances that you're given, as opposed to just barreling down on the one idea you have and refusing to wiggle in spite of <laughs> the people that fall by the wayside or the money that's piling up illogically. You know, we've seen these projects that get really out of hand because someone couldn't couldn't flex, couldn't be a team player, and the arts really encourage good teamwork. Number six, it encourages discipline. Again, the pursuit of any form of excellence encourages discipline, but the arts in particular encourage the pursuit of excellence. For myself as a teacher, yes, I enjoy teaching extremely talented children, but more than that, I enjoy teaching children who work, children who will put in the effort to get better. I would rather have someone of average talent and a good work ethic because at the end they will do much better than the very talented student who doesn't practice. There's only, there's only so far talent will get you. I hate the misconception that art is for the talented. It's simply not true. Number seven is simply the broad context in which studying the arts is a benefit to academic skills. And there have been many, many studies done on how it improves test scores. And this is not surprising when you consider all of these concepts about artistic intelligence and creativity and how it just brings in a whole mode of thinking that's necessary for all good thinking and problem solving. And so we can see this both in very like clear, tangible ways. Like of course, a student who is used to being in a play every year is going to be a little bit better at speech and debate or public speaking because they will be practicing those skills. But we also see this sort of intangibly 
where if you're doing creative work, it will help in other areas where you wouldn't expect it to connect. Yes, playing piano will help you with math. It will probably also tie into your thinking in biology or the way students approach history or religion. It all connects because it comes down to the brain and the way that you're thinking and forming new ideas. So number seven, huge benefit to academic performance. And number eight, and this has been throughout, but it is its own category as well, life skills. It teaches so many important life skills. We've already talked about it. emotional intelligence, creative problem solving, all of these are life skills in and of themselves. It can also teach us to adapt to different circumstances, to work well under pressure. It can teach time management. A lot of the arts teach fine motor skills and memory. So many very practical basic skills that we want for our daily lives and for any workplace we're going into, we can really glean from the arts as well. So there you have it. Those are my eight categories for skills that we can really develop through the arts and why it is so important to have them as a crux, like the foundation for our education today, for our students and our workers and just ourselves as people. I hope you found this content useful and interesting. I love all of it. If you have any thoughts or comments, please go ahead and put them down below. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you next time.